I am uh, delighted to see you all here today. Uh, welcome, I'm Linda Darling-Hammond, President of the Learning Policy Institute, uh, and delighted to welcome you to this briefing on teacher turnover. Uh, this is co-sponsored by the Council for Chief State School Officers, the National Association for State Boards of Education, and the National Conference of State Legislatures, uh, uh, organizations that are all concerned with this issue of teacher uh, recruitment, rec retention, supply and demand. And it will feature research uh, by uh, one of our uh, leading LPI researchers, Desiree Carver-Thomas, and commentary from students, teachers, local board members, and state policymakers. And today we're going to be discussing uh, a new report by LPI on teacher turnover, why it matters and what we can do about it. And I want to just frame this by noting why this is so important. Um, teacher turnover is actually the silent source of teacher shortages, uh, which many of us have been experiencing all across the country. Uh, districts and schools have been continuing to struggle to meet the growing demand for qualified teachers since about 2012, when the layoffs that had been common during the recession ended the teacher workforce has grown by about 400,000 teachers. And districts have been seeking to reclaim the positions that they had previously cut uh, during the recession and replace the teachers who have left. And they're kind of, uh, kind of climbing, trying to climb this hill every year uh, and replace those who leave through the leaky bucket. But even with intensive recruiting inside and outside of the country, you've seen news reports about that, more than 100,000 classrooms are being staffed this year by instructors who are unqualified for their jobs. Uh, that uh, we just did a review of state teacher workforce reports across the country and just in the 31 states that keep some data, uh, we found 82,000 positions filled by underqualified teachers, uh, an additional thousands of unfilled vacancies and if you kind of prorate that across the country, it's well over 100,000. Vacancies filled by, pe by people who are not prepared for the jobs. And as we know, that's almost always disproportionately affecting students in low-income schools, in high minority schools, the students who most need sophisticated skills uh, and capable teachers are the ones who experience the revolving door uh, of teachers who are both underprepared uh, and most likely to leave. Uh, and so this, this problem, uh, is in high relief for me right now because I just finished a study of teaching in five high achieving countries around the world. Uh, it's um, out in a version called Empowered Educators looking at China, Singapore, Finland, uh, Canada, Australia, uh, where uh, there are surpluses of teachers, where teachers tend to stay in the profession for a career, where teachers come in with free or virtually free preparation in high quality programs, lots of mentoring, support systems from the very beginning, uh, and where in that lifelong career, they're engaged in lots of collaboration with each other um, and uh, able to make teaching the kind of career that is uh, a high status, strongly appreciated, uh, well-served profession. So as we will hear, the situation is very different in many states in the U.S. There is a lot of variability, um, but we'll also hear about solutions. Uh, so I'm going to get the uh, festivities going by introducing my colleague, Desiree Carver-Thomas, uh, who is the lead author for this report. Um, and Desiree uh, is a former New York City school teacher. Uh, and then a policy graduate from the Goldman School of Public Policy at the University of California at Berkeley, for which those of us at Stanford forgive her uh, because <laughs> the quality of her work uh, warrants uh, that respect. Uh, and after uh, Desiree presents the results of this study, uh, we'll hear from two panels examining the current context in the schoolhouse and the state house. I'm instructed to tell you that the Hashtag is hashtag keep our teachers. So please tweet away and Desiree, please join us at the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good morning. 
Last year, LPI released a report, A Coming Crisis in Teaching, that investigated teacher supply, demand, and shortages nationally. And we found that there was a teacher shortage and projected that the shortage would worsen if uh, trends in teacher supply or demand um, didn't change. Uh, so one of the driving trends that we, we found in that report um, was teacher attrition, teachers leaving the field. So we wanted to understand that better. Um, why do teachers leave their schools, um, either to leave the profession or to, to move schools? Uh, where does that happen and how can we reduce that? Um, so we looked at the most recent uh, national survey data from the Schools and Staffing Survey and Teacher Follow-Up Survey to answer those questions. So this is what uh, one Washington DC teacher had to say about why she left teaching. She says, over the course of four years, my school's administration steadily expanded the workload and workday while barely adjusting salaries. More and more major decisions were made behind closed doors and more and more teachers felt micromanaged rather than supported. And as you'll see, the concerns that this teacher, Sarah, brings up are not uncommon among teachers leaving the field. But first, why does teacher turnover matter? So one of the major reasons teacher turnover matters is that it drives shortages. So like Linda mentioned, we recently estimated that schools across the country were short about 100,000 teachers last year. And we went through and looked at publicly available data from states on their underqualified teachers in, in classrooms. Um, and, and that's how we arrived at that estimate. Um, these are teachers who are often only able to be hired when a fully qualified teacher isn't available. So that's what makes it a strong indicator of shortages. And as the beginning of this school um, year began, we've seen news stories that indicate that in many states, shortages aren't letting up. In fact, in, in Metro Nashville, um, students had to take online courses um, because uh, the school district hadn't been able to hire enough math, science, uh, special education, career tech, foreign language teachers by the beginning of the school year. So this pie graph um, shows national demand for teachers in 2016. And the shaded red area represents um, the number of vacancies created by teacher attrition, teachers leaving the classroom. And as you can see, almost all of the demand for new teachers is due to teacher attrition. And in this graph, you can see um, in yellow, the amount of pre-retirement attrition, basically teachers who are leaving before retirement age. So that accounts for most of the attrition, uh, most of the demand for new teachers due to attrition. Only a third of the demand for new teachers is due to retirements. Um, so this suggests that if we could reduce the level of pre-retirement attrition, we could substantially reduce the demand for new teachers and that would go a long way towards solving shortages. Um, Indeed, if we could cut our attrition rate in half to be comparable with other high achieving nations, we could virtually eliminate shortages across the country. So attrition drives teacher shortages and that has an impact on teacher quality and student achievement. When districts have a hard time filling vacancies, they may cancel courses, increase class sizes, uh, staff classes with long-term substitutes, all of which undermine student achievement um, but often they, they hire underprepared teachers. Um, so not only are teachers without full preparation generally worse for student outcomes, they act as a band-aid solution. Um, research indicates that teachers uh, without full preparation leave at two to three times the rates of fully prepared teachers, creating the leaky bucket phenomenon that further contributes to shortages. So I've been talking about the role of attrition, um, but our report is, is about turnover generally. So attrition is those teachers who are leaving schools. Turnover refers to both those leaving schools and those switching schools. Um, so about 8% of teachers leave uh, the profession each year. Again, that's about double the rates in high achieving countries like Finland and Singapore. Um, and then another 8% switch schools each year. So it's important to note that while re reducing attrition um, could go a long way to solving shortages, reducing turnover is also very important. Um, when a teacher leaves a school, even to teach in another school, the effect on the students in that school is the same as if that teacher had left the profession. 
Um, and when teachers switch schools at high rates, it exacerbates the shortages in the schools where that most often happens. So there's quite a bit of variation in turnover across the country. We see that in states, um, there are states with turnover rates lower than 10%, states with turnover rates higher than 20%. Um, we notice uh, higher turnover rates in the South overall. Um, there's also variation across districts. Um, based on our analysis, teachers in cities tend to have higher turnover rates and also in some rural areas as well. Um, math, science, special education, English language development all have especially high turnover rates. Um, and these are subjects that have some of the most critical shortages. Um, these teachers tend to enter the field with less preparation. And especially in the case of math and science teachers, um, tend to have better um, uh, opportunities for more lucrative work. Um, many states are using the new ESSA law as an opportunity um, to provide comprehensive and rigorous college and career ready curriculums. Um, but that can be significantly hindered without um, a skilled and effective educator workforce. So how can schools be prepared to, um, how can schools prepare students for college level math if they're having a hard time hiring math teachers and keeping the ones that they have. Um, high turnover is especially pronounced in Title I schools uh, that serve more uh, low, uh, students from low-income families. Um, not only that, uh, turnover is even higher among math and science, special education, and English language development teachers in Title I schools, um, and especially high, oops, especially high, among teachers who enter teaching through an alternative certification pathway, teachers who are also more likely to teach in Title I schools. So because of their higher turnover rates, um, teachers in these schools end up having uh, fewer years of experience, um, stay at their schools for fewer years on average. We see similar trends in schools that serve uh, majority students of color. Um, turnover rates are higher overall. Um, and they're even higher in critical uh, shortage subjects like math and science, special education. Um, alternative certification teachers are most likely to teach in these schools, but are more than twice as likely to leave them than to leave teachers, uh, leave schools with few students of color. So with such high turnover rates, teachers in these schools have been at their schools fewer years on average and have less teaching experience. All in all, schools serving students of color, students from low-income families, have the highest turnover rates and the least experience. And this is a huge disservice to our students because students really benefit from uh, being in schools with a stable workforce and from learning from experienced teachers. Uh, teachers of color tend to teach in uh, high turnover schools. Um, teachers of color make up about 18% of the teacher workforce, uh, but Three and four work in the schools with uh, serving the most students of color, which, as I mentioned, also tend to have high turnover rates. Um, they're also twice as likely to enter the field through an alternative certification pathway, which, again, is associated with higher turnover rates. Um, but looking at uh, turnover in a statistical model that controls for several factors, we see comparable turnover rates between teachers of color and white teachers who may be teaching in similar um, settings. And finally, turnover has costs. Um, turnover can affect teacher quality when schools resort to hiring underprepared teachers or inexperienced teachers. High turnover can affect staff cohesion, collaboration, and the transfer, transfer of institutional knowledge. Um, and common solutions to mitigating shortages like cutting courses, hiring substitute teachers, um, hiring underprepared teachers, all undermine student achievement. And finally, there are financial costs um, to recruiting and training new teachers estimated um, at the high end at as much as $21,000 for each to replace each new teacher in an urban district. So I'm going to um, demo a, a calculator tool that uh, we just released last week um, that helps districts to calculate um, what the cost of turnover could be based on uh, several research estimates. So the first demo I'll show you is um, 
is in Prince George's County. And this is if you know how many teachers have left a district. Um, so I know that in Prince George's County, 1,197 teachers left. So I can enter that in in the top uh, field. Um, so that's happening. Um, and I don't know the cost of turnover in that district specifically, but I can enter an estimate based on uh, the research for either a rural district, a suburban district, or an urban district. Um, and as you can see, the estimate is about $21,000 per teacher for a total of over $25 million of cost to the district. And the number below 25 million, 12 million, 12.6 million, is if you could cut the turnover rate in half. So like I mentioned earlier, if we could cut attrition in half, we could eliminate shortages. We could also save um, or reinvest um, quite a bit of funds. So now I'll show you um, what this would look like in Oakland, California. So I don't know how many teachers left there, so I'll use the Let Us Help You tab. Um, I do know that there are 2,796 teachers in, in the district, so I will enter that in. If you don't know that, there's a link where you can find the number of, of teachers in a district. Um, and I know that 18% of teachers left in a year, so I can enter that in. Again, we have some estimates there that you can use, um, the national average for schools or districts. Um, again, I will select urban district, and I see a total of about $10.6 million. Um, and, it, and I wanna emphasize that these aren't the actual costs um, that these districts paid, um, but these are estimates that we um, can use to get, a, to get a sense of what the cost could be um, given the attrition rates in these districts. Um, so, Thank you. So instead of spending $21,000 to replace a teacher who left a school that could amount to millions of dollars, um, states and districts could direct those funds into residency models to better prepare teachers or competitive compensation packages or high quality mentoring, um, other strategies that would help to improve teacher quality, which I will get to um, later. So to recap, why does teacher turnover matter? It drives teacher shortages, um, which undermine teacher quality and student achievement. Turnover itself also undermines student achievement, even if there are no shortages because of the instability it creates. Um, it's worse in critical shortage subjects and worse for um, students from low-income families and students of color. Um, and it has costs, financial and otherwise. So now that we know it matters, um, why does it happen? Uh, based on our analysis of, sur of the survey data, we see that dissatisfaction plays a significant role in teacher turnover. Um, most teachers express some dissatisfaction with accountability pressures or with uh, administrative support or with the working conditions that they were experiencing. Um, next come family and personal reasons. Again, retirement is just a, about a third of the reasons why teachers leave. Um, they leave to pursue other jobs and for financial reasons. Um, we see a similar trend uh, for teachers who move schools with even more uh, citing dissatisfaction of some sort. Um, so if teachers are leaving the field uh, and switching schools because they're dissatisfied, states should consider how to uh, improve those conditions. One of the key areas that teachers express dissatisfaction with is administrative support. And we find a significant relationship between administrative support and uh, teacher turnover. When teachers feel strongly that their administration isn't supportive, isn't encouraging, they're more than twice as likely um, to leave teaching or move schools than when their administration is supportive. Um, Preparation also impacts turnover. So again, in a model that holds uh, several factors constant, um, teachers who enter teaching through an alternative certification program were 25% more likely to turn over than other teachers. Um, and we see uh, an even greater uh, turnover rate for alternatively certified teachers um, in schools serving students of color. So it's important that teacher preparation programs are adequately preparing teachers for the challenging job of teaching um, because that makes, it, makes a difference in turnover. 
So this is a quote from Sean Sheehan, who was last year's um, Oklahoma Teacher of the Year, and he moved a few hours away to a district in Texas. Um, and, you know, a first-year teacher in his new district uh, makes $7,500 more than the average teacher in Oklahoma where he was teaching. So, of course, teachers don't go into the profession to make lots of money, but being able to take care of themselves and their families um, does make a difference in recruitment and retention. And in many states, that's difficult. In 30 states, a teacher heading a family of four is eligible for several forms of government assistance. Um, so compensation matters. And we see this, again, in our model um, that teachers uh, who in districts that offer higher salary schedules have turnover rates 20 to 30 percent lower than districts in um, teachers in districts with the lowest salary schedules. So what can we do? Um, we know that compensation matters for teachers and uh, that they'll be more likely to continue teaching when they receive competitive salaries. States can also consider other forms of compensation like service scholarships and loan forgiveness programs. Um, these programs can make teaching an affordable occupation by underwriting the cost of high quality preparation, especially for those teachers who will teach in the subjects and locations where they're most needed. Um, and districts can also consider offering other types of financial incentives like housing incentives and childcare incentives. Um, it's important that uh, it's important that states invest in building the teacher workforce through high retention pathways that prepare teachers who will be successful in the classroom and want to continue teaching. Um, through teacher residencies modeled after uh, medical residencies, uh, residents complete a year-long apprenticeship uh, with master teachers in a high-need school while completing a uh, coursework for a master's degree. Uh, these teachers have extensive hands-on preparation uh, before becoming responsible for their own students. Completers of these programs tend to be more diverse, more competent teachers than other beginners, um, and they stay in the field longer than their peers. Grow your own programs, build the pool of prospective teachers uh, in the communities where they're needed by recruiting, training, and supporting high school students, paraprofessionals, after-school program staff, and other community members. Um, those teaching in their own communities are more likely to stay in the profession. And once teachers enter the classroom, they benefit from strong mentoring and induction, um, programs that support, um, that support them through observation and feedback, time to collaborate with others, uh, reduce workload and other supports uh, to help them to be successful in their early years. And finally, a key issue is administrative training. Um, administrators are very important to what happens um, what the teaching and learning environment is like in a school um, and whether teachers choose to stay or leave. So um, states could invest in their accreditation and licensure systems um, so that administrations, to ensure that administrators uh, come into schools prepared to create supportive and nurturing work environments um, and also offer ongoing professional support for administrators. Districts can build leadership pipelines that support district staff with the skills that they need to move from teacher to teacher leader to assistant principal to principal. Um, and many states are taking advantage of the optional 3% leadership set aside in ESSA um, to work toward that. So I just wanna close by saying um, that we have a series of research reports um, on our little jump drives that you may have received when you came in, also on our website that go into greater depth on the points I've made here. We also have um, a one-pager on what states can do that's on your jump drive, and um, we're committed to supporting on these issues, um, so please feel free to reach out. Thank you.